We're back. We're here. Welcome, we everybody. It. it was a little touch and go. We're here but to bring justice, fear to all the conservatives in the world. They should fear us. Ladies Hell and yeah. gentlemen, we because are all domestic terrorists. You just don't know what to expect. Yeah. Conserv- conservatives should fear my wrath. I played basketball last night, full court pick up basketball for like two hours and i think like half of my body is paralyzed now <laughs> yeah that's Can the kind of energy i'm bringing to the table baby Can you what do? um depends <laughs> mm. depends on the circumstances which means no like i there was a time and place in my life where i could dunk fairly consistently never in a game on a fast break i don't think i've never like done that but i could don't, dunk don't take this the wrong way but you don't look like someone with mad hops as they say no, that's not. You're not wrong. I'm. Yeah. I'm very heavy. Yeah, you're. He- you got. Yeah. Weight. Except Bradley Martin can dunk, and yeah, we are around steroids. the same. We're around the like. I'll just tell you like this. We're around the same weight and around the same height. But that motherfucker can dunk. That's because he deadlifts 700 pounds. I deadlift 400 pounds. There's a 300 pound difference between our our, our pushing power. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think I, I I wouldn't feel too bad about that. I think he spends a little more time working out probably than yeah. Than you he's do. got he's got a little bit more help than I do yeah. as well <laughs> for for a longer period of time. But you know, obviously that doesn't discount the tremendous amount of hard work he puts. Of in. course not. No heavens, no. Well, welcome today, guys. We got all kinds of fun stuff to talk about. Jordan Peterson's uh, steak cooking advice. We're going to talk about the Mr. Beast controversy. He's actually been. Uh, uh, outed as a communist, and Hassan has a hit on him now from uh, yeah, Mr. Beast. Well, I have to eat him now because like he's like a bigger communist. Uh, you know that's how it works. You, you just have rich. to fight like yeah. You have eat to f- no 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 no. We the left has moved past eating the rich. It's just <laughs> eat the rich just means like let's let's yell at each other. Let's that's always you. You yeah, know you know they're coming for you, bro. When they get hungry, dude. I don't give a fuck. You look they can tasty. eat my dick. How about that? <laughs> Uh, let's no. see. We got all kinds of good Pull stuff. Cr- Crowder's bisexual phase uh, is is you know comes out. We also I have. Can I just ask why? What's going on with this number one bullet point here? What are you uh, guys gonna make fun of me? No, I'm a huge huh? One Piece fan. Oh, okay. Good. I wanted to ask you about it because uh, you've been you tweeted about there's one a, piece. there's there's a reaction. I think one of my one of my stands actually posted. It's kind see of a spoiler though. It. A little bit. I mean, it's like not that big of a spoiler, yeah. I think. Not, yeah, I'm, Dude, I have so many big spoilers that I want to talk about. You know, Oda is like a leftist, like straight up. Yeah, he, a snake, you mean? Oh, the guy who Oda. made it own. No, own no, 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 no. Oda, the guy who made, yeah, yeah. Goda. I didn't know that. But yes, uh, I saw you tweeting Luffy's dad is, a, is the head of the Revolutionary Army, bro. So. His name's Snake. No, Dragon. Oh, right, Dragon. But, but no, that is. Close. His name is, I think. Um, like so, Oda has a Che Guevara poster in his room uh, okay. that they uh, that they like people in the fandom have post uh, pointed to. But um, pretty sure, yeah, Luffy's dad is is tailored off of uh, Che Guevara or potentially Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro. Now there's a now there's someone to look up to. I mean, he he, he yeah. If you're, I mean, if you're a leftist, like yeah, you're. <coughs> You know, people, people, people like Fidel. Fuck yeah! Are you kidding me? Okay. Absolutely, Che Guevara as well. Look, these guys are not infallible. They've done a lot of fucking, you know, not so great things. But you always gotta, you always gotta compare it to what. I thought everybody came hated before. Castro for some reason. Or f- yeah. Well, of course you hate you. Think I don't that. hate him. I don't You're, know much. No, about no, no. Him. I'm saying, of course you think that. You're yeah. Living in America, of course everybody hates. But Fidel what th- isn't there a bunch of like uh, of people who left and lived here all hate. Castro? Yes. Is that because like they're rich fucks who had to flee? Or some are and that? some aren't, as is the case with any kind of revolution or any kind of like uh, political uh, instability. There are a lot of people who left that, you know, owned the sugar plantations. And then there are a lot of people who left that did not, that still felt, uh, you know, that the new regime was brutal and oppressive. Regardless, there are people who felt like they were betrayed, and there are people who look for economic opportunity in the United States of America. But yes, for the the uh, as far as I understand, you know, uh, yes, Cubans in America are not 
fans of Fidel Castro. Okay. For understandable Well, reasons. anyway, rest in peace, going merry, gone but not forgotten. Yeah. Have you gotten to the part where they get the new boat yet? No. Oh, yeah. No, That's I fire. haven't. That's fire. The point always is you gotta you gotta look at like not just Fidel Castro or Che Guevara, but you gotta look at who they they came after. Like yeah. who who they they dethroned. And Batista was a far more brutal individual than, than Fidel Castro was. Who's your favorite One Piece character? Oh, easy, Zoro. Yeah, Zoro's f- sick. I, I yeah, he's so cool. Yeah, he's the coolest. I agree. I think uh, he's he's dope. Um I think I actually you know what? Maybe Nico Robin. Nico Robin is pretty fire. I like the vibe. I love her. Yeah, she's stacked. She's best bro. girl. Okay, this every girl is stacked in One Piece. It's just he's a pervert. Just like Well, you know what? Anime. In the in the beginning of the show, I was kind of happily surprised by how not perverted the female characters were. Bro, Nami's titties grew like yeah, eight ev- fucking ev- cups ev- every season. Yeah, exactly. Like she looked normal. I was like, okay, maybe this is an anime that isn't written Bitch. by a f- perverted freak. And then now when I'm on the season I'm on, like uh dude, it's like it's like ridiculous. Okay, bro. here's the thing. Like here's like, here's, like, here's what I'll say about out, this. Here's what I'll say about this. All the way up to her ass. It's like, dude. You know how I just no, said, you know, you gotta you gotta measure Fidel Castro's accomplishments or who he is by looking at who he came uh, after. It's the same with anime. You gotta measure how perverted anime is by looking at how perverted anime is in general. And with respect to like all the fan servicey shit out there, I think uh, one formative accomplishment for Oda is that. Uh, a lot of the female characters thus far in the story have insanely good backstories. Like they almost, they even pass, they even pass like the Bechdel test, which is unimaginable for, for, you know what I mean? Wait, for, what is for that any the one where two women have a, have a, uh, conversation between each other? Actually, I don't even man. know if it passes the Bechdel test. Probably not, but <laughs> it's fucking anime. But wait, check this out. The, here's a, here's a shot. This is from. I guess meme piece. I just got to this episode and I'll, oh, I just saw, dude. I just wait. wait it's so this ridiculous. is literally, bro. You did not just get to this episode. You've been a fan of One Piece. This, this is. Uh, oh, maybe I was confusing. This is Annie's lobby. Okay, so I, never, I actually yeah. paused this frame to show my brother how much of a pervert uh, this. I thought uh, this was Oda from is. a later uh, arc. No, no, no. This is Annie's lobby. I just watched this. Okay. Yeah, I see. Okay. And then, and then it's just like a tit shot. Wait, what? No, it, nope. it's coming up. Look oh, at that there it shot, is. Yep. bro. That's the... But that's the, honestly like every frame is like I've yeah, seen every frame, frame way of worse painting. Than this. Yes, yeah. you're for, right. And it's anime like, that's still tame. I guess yeah. You know? I for agree. For anime that is still very tame. Anime is very fan servicey, but like I said, I mean, here, look at this. This is what she looks like in the show. I think this is a God, people are so weird about this shit. I'm getting into all kinds of weird fucking stuff here, brother. The animators is that not Oda? Okay, everybody calm down. There's This is what she looked like. You could see her like vagina curves, bro. Middle. Like how low is she wearing those pants? Okay, she looks great. Um look at how low is she wearing those you, pants, you, dude. Her vagina's point? like right below the damn yeah, waist. I mean it's not real, obviously. Well, I'm just they, they, I know it's not yeah, real. It's a bunch of damn. fucking horny hikikomoris who don't like leave their Milk houses porn. and think that like it makes this me a little uncomfortable because I'm, you know, 37 and I'm sitting at home watching the show, which I love. It is like the most famous anime. It's very manga. cozy. I like it because it's cozy. That's it. That's no, like it's, the it's, it's the this makes me uncomfortable though. Because if so, I don't know how to explain this to somebody who's outside. Exploding milk porn. Bro, never anime explain realm. anime to someone who is outside. Just don't do that. See, I've I, never. I, I need to watch it in private. Like if people, if people in the, if people in the real world ask me if I like anime, I say, ew, no, what the fuck? I'm not a pervert. I just say, yeah. What is what is the anime? Yeah. Exactly. What? No, I'm oh. not a kid. What? What am I a child? No, I don't watch animated stuff. Coming. Yeah. Well, there it is. I love One Piece. Uh, it's awesome. It's, it's, I love, people complain that it's so long, and I'll be frank, because there's like a thousand, hundred episodes. At first I was like, there's no way I'm going to watch this. But actually, you know when you get a good show, and then you run out of episodes, how tragic that is? You never run out of episodes. Yeah, that's true. There's a thousand, there's literally a thousand episodes. A thousand hundred. I am in 334 or something. Like, that's, and, and, you know, there's no... It's it's seemingly gonna keep going on. 
which is great. It, it's based off of a of a comic, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, and I think the and comic hasn't ended either. Oh, that hasn't ended. No, either. it's still going. Isn't that nuts? Wow. But great. you know what I do like about One Piece to make? Why don't we just title this the One Piece episode? Sure. I f- do feel like the plot is always moving forward. I don't feel like they're wasting time. You know what I mean? That's true. I think the earlier seasons they definitely wasted more time. However. Yeah. When you get to like where I'm at, you're like, oh my God, this is, this was all relevant. Like even shitty, like even shitty lame characters from like literally the first episode. Oh yeah. You'll you see, see them. Yeah. Like they come eight, back. seven seasons later and you're like, yes. what the fuck? That's, yes. that's crazy that they like, there's no frame goes uh, to waste. Basically. I'll be real with you, Hassan. It really picks up around episode 470. <laughs> I'm actually not kidding. That sounds like such a <laughs> fucking meme, but it's I it's believe it. Real, well, yeah. I mean, listen, Water <laughs> Seven has been Water Seven and Any's Lobby have been that's my, one of my faves. That two favorite so arcs so far. So yeah, like that's really good. God, Nico Robin is so sick. All right, calm down, bro. I wish she was real. <laughs> Nico Robin, best I'm down, bro. I'm sure I can get you a Nico Robin uh, body pillow. All right, let's talk about something else. Uh, thank you, One Piece, though. We love you. Do you want to see the video of me almost crying when I watch the TikTok of uh, Going Mary? Oh, no, yeah, actually, no, no, let's not do that. Let's just move on. The Going Mary. Oh, she was such a good ship. Yeah. But wait till you meet the, the, the new okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, yeah. The new one is. <laughs> this is right. why. Th- this is like so much ammo for random, like conservatives to clip out and be like look at these two fucking adult man children like getting sweaty and and greased up over fucking it, anime yeah at least Tim, I don't, Tim Pool has a sword on his wall what the fuck does he have to say and Crowder has a poster and yeah. by the way at least I don't watch Carl Tuck, Tucker Carl fuck yeah no they they like I don't know. They fantasize about like the founding fathers. You know what I mean? I, I'd rather watch anime than like glaze up a bunch of slavers. You know, and, mm-hmm. and fantasize about being like a bunch of slavers who would die at the age of thirty-five because they had to cut their and, fucking and, limbs off. A hundred percent, brother. Tucker, uh, <laughs> my Tucker. Yeah. So anyway, let's talk about a little bit on Jordan Peterson. He's actually, as you guys know, deep into the all meat diet. Huge fan of. Uh, Oh God! Peterson. He's actually. L-O-L. Uh, I'm gonna issue a trigger warning here, not for the vegans, but actually for the meat eaters. I, you know, I eat. A, I, I'm actually cutting back on my red meat. You, you'll be happy to know. I'm but I, happy. Did, I'm proud ha- of you. Thank you. But I have put a lot of effort and time into c- how to cook steaks. Now this man here. I can't look at this, Ethan. This man here bought a Japanese A5 Wagyu, and he says, "How would you guys cook this beauty?" Now this. Does it have a price on it? This thing probably costs like 500 bucks, maybe more. Mm, probably like 200, I think. Quick speaking, you. Shut up, Hassan. That's what Jordan just said. <laughs> uh, he says, this man literally oh, told man. this fucking guy. He says, freeze it. And then air fry it at 450. Stop. Drain the fat. And then add water? Bro, I, I did, dude, I did, I did literally like an hour on this on my show when I fir- when it first came out. I'm not it, even kidding. This is actually like old. When I saw this tweet, I was like, D- he should go to jail. I, I'm not, you know how like, oh, C-16, if you misgender a trans person, you go to jail. Like, that's not real, but I wish it was specifically for this, okay? You, know what you should cool? go to jail for this. We should actually try this. Maybe it's no, there. I can't do that. No, I, I can't allow that. You that know is what this, I mean? This, okay, A5 Wagyu Maybe I is should try specifically, it. for those of you who don't know, if you want to pull that back up, okay? There, I'm in trouble again. It is the highest quality of meat that you can get on this planet, okay? A5 Wagyu, A5 is the, is the designation. The specificity, the reason why it's so, uh, the reason why it's regarded as a delicacy is because of the unique marbling, okay? In order to get that marbling, we're talking about hundreds of years of like cow technology. These cows get fed, they're not allowed to move, they're massaged regularly, and they listen to fucking like classical music and shit, okay? Like the way to get this marbling, which is the fat inside of the protein, okay? 
that is a scientific process. They're the so only what, ones in, that do it, really. And yes, it's a I'm small sure. place in Japan. Yes. So whenever people say, <laughs> like, oh, this is Kobe beef or whatever, like half the time, Three. that's not real yeah, A5 yeah, Wagyu. Yeah, more this half. is, okay? You can see it. So the fat is literally what actually makes this steak what it is. So Jordan Peterson saying, drain the fat. Add water. I literally, I just like, I hope he is never allowed to enter Japan or the United States of America ever again. This man said, steam it. He, still, want- he goes, add water and steam that bitch. Yeah, but somebody actually took his advice. Um, Fuck you, I don't if you want- don't like it. Oh wait, where's that photo? Oh wait, where's that photo of someone who took his advice and sent a picture? Yeah, someone took his advice. It was so good. Yeah, shame on you, Mr. Peterson. You that's you vile freak. How dare you? God, he tweets so much. What this guy, dude? This is just one hour of scrolling. Yeah, here's Hassan. You see this? Someone said, "Hey, no, I took a, my wag- a fake image from a. That's like a. I know. Famous. Sorry. I must say that I've had some post. I'm so serious. I, I get like I get phrase. very, I get very serious about meat. And, Wait, and what's cooking. happening back there? What? What happened to the picture? You took it down so fast. Yeah. I cooked my Wagyu steak exactly how he recommended. Frozen, then air fried. Turned out delicious. I just, oh God, I can't, I can't look at that. And this. then he actually responded to that. I don't think he knew it was a joke. But yeah, shame on you, Jordan Peterson. Uh, Ouchie. I want to point something out here, okay? First of all, constantly eating red meat, Ruminant not good meat for you. Only- very Carnivore good. diet, no. not healthy for you. No. Okay? Understand this. It's not. <laughs> I eat so much chicken. I love red meat. I eat red meat too regularly. Okay? But what you need to understand, if you only have red meat, you're going to have health complications. Apple cider is going to probably take you out <laughs> like it almost killed Jordan Peterson. But the most offensive part of this entire process is that if you are advocating to eat fucking a carnivore diet, you know what I mean? at least develop an appreciation for the meat that you're consuming, the animal that you have butchered and murdered, okay? Let, let it not die in vain. By doing that, you are disrespecting the fucking animal. What are you saying, bro? Now, this is perfectly cooked now, A5. Also, on top of that, like, how, how do you make a diet? Like, how do you claim that you have this, like, incredible diet, okay? This carnivore diet, mm-hmm. which requires you to eat meat, and you still don't know how to cook meat. Think again, sunshine. Um, I it's resent that. Disgusting. Gordon Peterson does nothing wrong, and you are a hater. Also, you're a communist. YOLO bitches. Get Yo- some. Actually, so the whole all-meat diet is actually a total fucking grift that his daughter, friend of Andrew Tate, is doing. She actually even gave a, a speech here explaining that force-feeding your infant meat will make their head bigger. Now, I'm not sure that's a good thing. I was so confused by this. I'm not video. sure about making... You know what I mean? Okay, well, I mean... This is... I mean, Caleb I, Peterson. Maybe, maybe you should give it. I fucking wish my parents gave it a, a shot. Maybe force feeding you meat. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they kind of they kind of fucked up on that one, didn't they? <laughs> they yeah. sad. We need you. Anyway, have you seen this clip? It's great. Food that people can actually survive on as a single food without supplementing anything else, which is the perfect elemental diet for a sick person. If you use meat as a first food for a baby, their head circumference is actually larger than babies fed without meat. Yeah, I think that's called a birth defect. Baby one. I think that's called. They're like, yo, dude, if you force feed your child meat instead of milk, their head ends up two hundred percent larger. Are we missing something? <laughs> does she think? Does she think bigger head means bigger brain? Big head means smarter? big brain. Baby is yeah, angry. like that's why Sebastian Gorka is the smartest American, smartest Hungarian and American. Yeah. The ketogenic diet, which is the type of diet I'm on, minus the plant food, has been <laughs> shown. Yo, I'm on keto, minus the veggies. Veggies are for gay people, clearly. I mean, (laughs) she's so fucking nuts. Yeah. I just, I also don't believe it. Like, I I low-key don't believe that she's just exclusively eating meat in the way that she presents it. Because, like, you, you truly would have way more health complications. Like, I just, there's no way. I agree with you. I, I think she's lying. But she has this thing called the Lion Club where people pay her monthly for advice. It's really weird. And this is the kind of advice. Force feed your new, your infant through a syringe, ground up fucking cow blood or some shit. Epilepsy since the 1920s. 
and was kind of put out of fashion by anti-epileptics. In the first study on the carnivore diet... <laughs> the big anti-epileptic lobby. Damn. They got us again. Released by Harvard this November, adults consuming a carnivore diet experienced few adverse effects and instead reported health benefits and high satisfaction. The surprise came because an average of 90% of people saw improvements across all diseases on the diet. One in four people... If you stop and think what she's actually advocating for, it's she wants people to eat only meat. Like, the, do you understand, like, how fucked up that is for, like, the world? That's bad for the environment. It's so bad. It's also, like, not something that people can do because it's, like, super expensive. It's super expensive, and we will absolutely dev it. Well, that's why Jordan Peterson's always going on and on now about how global warming is a hoax. Like, the man... This, no, this he's going on and on so about fucked. the global warming is a hoax because he's an oil lobbyist. Like, make no mistake. He's getting money one million percent. I'd bet money that he's getting paid by the oil lobby. I mean, he is, actually. Why? Well, he's on the Daily Wire now. Yeah, it, it's not even just that, but also, like, he does the speaking engagements and stuff where he's constantly talking about, like, well, logging is destroying the environment, too. I mean, there's nothing wrong with fossil fuels. That's how we uplift the third world, like, that sort of shit. God, the oil lobby is so fucking devious. Anyway. Rats um, will dance for money. He, is, he, is, he does get speaking engagement fees from them. Oh, piece shit. of shit. Uh, one in guy. four people over 64 have type 2 diabetes in America. All respondents with diabetes discontinued non-insulin injection agents. This, this, she really said no more insulin, just eat meat. <laughs> Yo, you got diabetes? Throw that this insulin out. Suffers. For air fry a steak. Okay, for those of you who like will try and make an argument or something about this, like here's the thing. Yes, like a a bariatric surgery, a gastric bypass will cure your diabetes unless you're type one, right? <clears throat> um, or wait, is it type two the one that's like I think permanent it's and genetic? Type two is the permanent one. Yeah, okay, unless you're type two, but <coughs> make no mistake, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be uh, fixing curing your diabetes by just eating meat. You'd be curing your diabetes if you actually end up losing weight. That's which, it. of course, you're gonna lose weight with all meat because like. You're gonna get ill if you eat like what two thousand calories of meat every day. You'll be like oh, absolutely. I got it right. Type one is permanent. Okay. Type two is okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's it, it so vile. Eighty-four percent discontinued oral medication, and ninety-two percent of participants on the carnivore diet with type two diabetes discontinued insulin altogether. Over two thousand people were studied who were on the diet for over six months. And there was a 90% reduction in all diseases. The demonization of red meat was based off of a few hypotheses. The demonization based on of red meat? Who the fuck's demonizing you're, you're red, red, red meat? red literally talking about cows of fucking, like, you know, systematic okay, slaughter of you cow, know like, what? cow farts are literally causing global warming. You want to know who's demonizing red meat? Her fucking dad, bro. Yeah, I see That's what the, she did. I saw what, I saw what he did with the... I don't want to eat... What he suggested with, uh, with that A5 Wagyu is so, is so disgusting. Is, oh God! It's actually Shame. hateful. If I could call, I would like to call it a hate crime. It is a hate crime. Yeah. It's a hate crime against Japanese cows. But like, it's it's so insane what she's advocating for. Like, if even if what she's saying is true, let's assume that eating cows cures every fucking uh, sickness in the world. It's crazy, but. How are you going to do that? How are you going to get enough cows, even for the United States, to feed everybody just cow meat every meal? Like, what world are you even wanting to build with that? It's crazy. And it's um, Because the, um, the study, it, when I saw this video, I was like, I, she's talking about a Harvard study. And I was like, I got to see <coughs> what this is, like if there's any validity to it. Yeah, okay. And, and I know what your I know what your purpose was. <laughs> you you have a bias. I have an Don't agenda you? here. It's true. It's true. But yeah, I found the study, and the study itself makes a lot of points about that. How um, it is in no way realistic for you know the entire population to switch to this kind of diet because of those environmental concerns. It'd be catastrophic. Yeah, they they, they point that out. And on top of that, this study was all self-reported by people that are super into the carnivore diet. So of course they're saying 
Oh yeah, it, it's great because I mean, you know how these people are. They're they're all like her. They they think it's like a cure all. They self reported. So how did they find the the participants? On like Twitter, on social media. So what's the point of even making this? Like, no, Harvard, Harvard's falling apart. What's the point of even doing this? I mean, like, hey, corn of our diet people, tell me how you're. Because they're too, it's because they're too focused on doing pronoun studies. So they, the, the institution of Harvard is falling apart, folks. That's right. They're not even doing good studies no more. I'll tell you what, man. I mean, uh, I, like, you can do a self reported study. It's just like there's no way to recreate this, I don't think. And also... Diets are so complicated, so complex, because human beings are so different from one another. Um, there's different ways that people process, metabolize food. It's just <laughs> stupid. It's just stupid to be like, oh, just a carnivore diet will, will work. When ultimately, yes, if you dramatically shift your diet, and one thing I always say is you have to make sure your diet is, your diet is whatever it is, right? Like you can have an unhealthy diet, you can have a healthy diet, but you have to make sure that your diet is one that you can follow for the rest of your life. Uh, otherwise, you will yo-yo. Your weight will go back and forth uh, as soon as your, I guess, quote-unquote, diet is over, right? Because there's no such thing. And I don't think you can do that with just straight meat. <laughs> well, the reason people do lose weight on meat is because going to, like, one food is, is like, a, it is, it's a technique in, in nutrition and in health to figure out, like, if you're having food allergies or f certain foods aren't doing good for your body. So if you if you are having some kind of allergies and you feel sick from eating, which I assume these people probably do to do something as radical as that, if you go back down to just eating meat, then you know whatever you were eating before is out of your diet. But you're not you're supposed to slowly add things back in one at yeah. a time, not yeah. just go oh I'm just gonna eat meat forever. That doesn't make any fucking sense. To go you're, back, you're to literally describing <coughs> fixing eating disorders. Like that's what dietitians would dis di would teach you on, step by step. Yeah, they they just they just they like sticking in the dysfunction part. Yeah. Well, I, it, I, it's just there's it's no fun. The fuck, like yeah, food is fuel, but you can make healthier choices that work for you. I do it. You know, I I've been relatively successful in this endeavor. It just pisses me off that they. They take something that I enjoy eating and then they turn it into like this awful thing. Like they're they they advocate for like the worst kind of uh, the worst type of consumption. There's still you can still have carbs. You should have a healthy, balanced diet. It's so stupid. Uh, going back to the survey, it says, or this is the study she's citing. So not only were they uh, self-assessed, but it does not include any objective assessment of their diet, nutrition status, health-related outcomes, or health-associated behaviors. Oh, why does it lie? Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, like they it, said, further investigation is needed to better understand the diet and its impact on health. And that's directly from the study. So it's not even that it's like a bad study. Like, they acknowledge the shortcomings in the study. It was just they were... <laughs> Super preliminary. Right, exactly. And she's Where like, not she Harvard. Where is talking about this? Apparently, uh... I just saw somebody in the chat mention it, Oxford. Yeah, it looks like it's some British shit because like the yeah. kids in the back look like a bit composers. A bit dressed up, isn't it? Yeah. Like, oh, fine. here comes a fancy. I oh, fancy eating meats too, me lady. <laughs> Big fan. Big I'll fan. I'll stand of... in attention to your her royal highness, Michaela. I told you. The lion diet, McQuack Peterson. I love Scran. I taught her to say, Booyah Kasha. <laughs> ...studies that have been proven to be false. Saturated fat has slowly been disappearing as the cause Why for heart disease in scientific her? literature. Yeah, take, to relax, you know what I mean? Be comfortable yeah. up there. Yeah, she's like she's like, ready to run at any like, time. I've heard Londonistan is crime infested. <laughs> Lots of knife crime here, innit? <laughs> Need to keep your bag on you. Keep the fanny. Because it's not the cause for heart disease. Okay. The studies on colorectal cancer were done on people who also ate more sugar and processed foods, McDonald's. <laughs> Thanks the for the B roll of Chinese food. Myth Bro. when you don't consume plants. Our populations need <laughs> high levels of vitamins. It turns out She's... that's only necessary because we're consuming so many carbs. Okay, okay. We can't handle I the do, amount of I sugar in our body. I don't disagree with this. I, it's just so fucking annoying <laughs> when like people are talking, when, when people want to like, sell their fad diets 
they genuinely are, are, it just frustrates me so much because they always sneak in normal, factually accurate information in there. Not the fiber part, but like, yes, the American diet is absolutely fucked. Okay. We, uh, we have a, a tremendous amount of, we have a tremendous amount of carbs. Carbs are not as, carbs are not as filling overall. No, but she's talking about the types like of carbs, any carbs. processed sugars. They have like psycho takes on carbs. They're like no fucking carbs ever. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not that a keto advocate. Well. I've done keto, and it's not. It's not sustainable. I don't like it. It's not for me. Maybe it is for you. Who knows? But what I was trying to say is, like, yes, if you have a diet that comprises almost exclusively of fucking carbs and like very little protein, yes, your muscles are going to atrophy. You're not getting enough. You're not getting enough nutrients. You're not getting enough macronutrients. But who's doing that? You're living on just like French fries. I mean, I mean, there are pl people have shit diets. But I'm people, saying, like, of course that's bad for you. Nothing but bread. Bread, yeah, that's yeah, bread. that's not a good diet, diet either. It's also cheaper. Remember, remember what's worse, eating just bread or just red meat? Probably just bread. Yeah, no, eating just bread is worse. So you, she's onto something. Hmm. But but that's but you're right. Like that's an insane one to one comparison, <coughs> right? Like no one is eating just bread or just rice it, or whatever. If somebody's just eating carbs, they know they're unhealthy. You know what I mean? Like that's not a fucking mystery. But for some reason, she's convinced that eating just meat to the dome is the greatest thing that ever happened. Something that you guys uh, just should always keep in mind is that all fad diets basically are operating sneakily under the same fundamentals okay calories in calories out is real it's just you know your body is a machine obviously it varies uh from person to person some people have a higher more active metabolism they're less sedentary they're more fidgety even you know what i mean there's like multiple different ways that your body is constantly burning uh and and needs more carbs or needs more calories sorry these guys all are just basically taking that fundamental principle and then adding unnecessary weird shit to to you know uh deviate from the rest and and make themselves seem like a like a more marketable well here, trendy dieter i find a lot of them, of those diets they just act they kind of accidentally you just consume less because the diet is so fucking crazy like keto it's like um if you're not, if you're cutting out processed food and carbs and sugar, you're probably going to lose weight regardless of what you're eating. But here's Jordan Peterson talking very highly about his all meat diet. Well, I've been eating. I've been eating. I've been meat. eating. His voice is so fucking crazy. I've been eating only red meat. Basically nothing but meat. I don't like to talk about this much because I'm not a dietitian and it's really weird. And in some ways, I just hate Why this diet because I love Wait, really? Because your, your daughter is selling a whole fucking course about it. Love to cook. You've and changed, I love, bro. Love to go out to restaurants. It's very restrictive. But um, I, when I went on this diet to begin with, I, because of autoimmune issues, as far as I could tell, yeah, I lost like 50 pounds in six months. It was ridiculous. Like I wasn't really that much overweight. I'm about six two. So, but it, like eight pounds a month. Uh, this isn't the video I want. This isn't the I just, video I want. Here, this is fast forward a month or something of him. Yeah, I see. Here's Jordan Peterson on his... Are you still eating your all-beef diet? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> really, just just beef? Not? Can you have, like, ketchup no, on it? nothing. It isn't something I would lightly recommend. It's a little hard on your social He's life. He's such a badass, dude. It makes traveling quite dude. difficult, and it's dull as hell. But, but... But what's it, what has it done for you? Well, I lost 50 pounds in seven months. He looks so happy, by the way. But his, Dude, you know what no, I mean? Like, like, I think the, the meat is working when for you put him. The Sigma, when you put the Sigma grind set music <laughs> behind it, like, this, this effet liberal man who is, like, very clearly breaking his fucking body, mind, and soul, who got, like, you know, who almost died from a fucking apple cider attack, whose daughter may or not, may not be trying to kill him actively. Yeah. Okay? Um... Who had to go into a medically induced coma at a certain point in his fucking life. And, uh, you know, that guy, all of a sudden he looks cool, you know? No, it's normal to be like this, this fucking lifeless husk. It was like, yes, I'm crying all the time because I have a hormonal imbalance. But honestly, it's okay because I've lost a lot of weight. 
I I've had lost all four weight. Pizzas in the last 30 the days. kids are saying W Riz. I'm off all my psychiatric drugs. He says that too. Can't yeah. you tell I'm doing wonderful? Dude, this man looks like he's on the fucking edge of ending it all. Stop snoring. I stopped snoring. I had some autoimmune conditions that seem to have gone away. That is so stupid. I'm not taking antidepressants. Yeah. My mood isn't perfectly regulated, but dude, bro, he got I, that's an the, understatement. You look like you're gonna kill yourself. No, you gotta think to the barbiturates after this. So <laughs> he fucking no, didn't take, brother. Like, I don't have to take any meds. I don't wipe anymore. I've had over forty pizzas in the last thirty days. I don't even look to see if it's dirty. I just assume it is. I'm under a fair bit of stress, so that might have something to do with it. I sleep much less. Uh, That's um, not I can good. Work more. You, I, I now that I only eat meat, diet. I sleep two hours a day. Bro, 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 bro. Especially the sleep part, like it's so important. I oh my god, for for a healthy body, mind, soul, whatever the fuck you want to call it, your sleep is so so incredibly important. You need to get like it's not a meme that people say like you need to get eight hours. Like I and I say this as someone who doesn't get eight hours, but I'm telling you, like. It's it's bananas. He's like, yeah, I can work out. That's I can plus. work more now that I don't sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's a plus I used to for say him. that. I used to say that when I slept fucking four hours. Nah, yeah, it just ruined me. I'm off my antidepressants and I'm off sleep as well. It turns out sleep is a conspiracy by Big Pillow. Yeah, sleep is so sleep is definitely hugely important in your <laughs> weight loss, weight gain, whatever your dietary, uh, whatever your goals are. Sleep is genuinely important because it, you, you know, your body's not going to process hormones uh, correctly. Your body's not going to push out the, the right kind of hormones that you need. Now, let's talk about Mr. Beast. Let's try to hit our, all of our main topics here. So I think everybody had kind of a visceral reaction to this thumbnail. First of all, without even analyzing the content of the video, I think we can all just look at this and appreciate how fucking dystopian and weird it is. Like, this man, the smile, first of all, is why, just... Why are the thumbos like it's that? It's just weird, man. This, like, is this a new thing? I mean, if Mr. Beast is doing it, it must be, like, there must be a reason for it. But, yeah, it is kind of, it's so creepy. And then this kid who's, like, obviously, like, fake Photoshop tears. But it's almost like, look what I did for this fuck, little fucker. I don't know. He's like, he, he thinks he's, like, yeah, the Willy the Wonka Thumbo, The Thumbo eyes. universally is, like, seen as, like, a weird one. But I think that's, like, the new meta, I guess, on YouTube. is like a Darmon-ass Thumbo. Yeah. Well, you know? Mr. Beast, yeah, like you said, if Mr. Beast is doing it, then you know that's what it is. Video but, has uh, and you know how 76 he works. million he, views right now. What? Video has 76 million views, so something's God. working. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. Uh, immediately, and I saw some people talking about, like, this This thumbnail's demonic. Yeah, it was it all is. overruled it who is. said that there's something entirely demonic about this thing. And he left it at that, and he just showed, like, the thumbnail. And people were like, you're saying it's demonic to cure a thousand people's blindness? Like, fuck you. And the dude that they're dunking on is like a fucking public defender. Like, dude, what do you mean? He's like, his entire life is fucking charity, you dickheads. Shut the fuck up. Like, he's literally... People... He, he literally defends poor people in the criminal justice system. Like, shut the fuck up. Um, people get very defensive of Mr. Beast, you know. And I get it. There's people that try to take shots at him, some journalists and stuff over silly shit. And he is, he is, you know, a good guy that does good things. And people fucking just love him, right? Yeah. I, but at I, the same time, I'm not criticizing the, what he, I think he did a great thing. I think he did a great thing. Yeah. And I think the people who are criticizing it, you and others, the criticism is that the fact that we live in a country where so many fucking people are desperate for an entirely curable Ten illness. Ten minute surgery dude it's a terrible minutes. blindness like they cannot see and yeah. you can cure it in 10 minutes yeah it's just like little suck and and it's like so third world of us well i mean but so <coughs> even he, mr b's like who is still very much a, a big fan of capitalism can you can you switch to this uh he's a big fan of capitalism jimmy uh, and and even he recognizes, despite being a big fan of capitalism, that this is like weird because he he literally in the video says, 
it doesn't really make sense because, like, these guys could just go back to work after their blindness is cured. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, that is, again, he has arrived at the heart of the problem, which is that it doesn't even make sense from a pro-capitalism perspective because you would have a more efficient labor force that you can, you know, that you can work harder if you want. From the, from the point of capital owners, that's precisely the reason why most developed nations, if not all of them, have some form of either affordable or free health care for this fucking reason. So the, the actually... Except uh, for America. And we're pieces of shit. I think Mr. Beast is actually getting a little bit radicalized from this, which is great, right? Because I don't think he is. But listen to this tweet. He says, I don't understand why curable blindness is a thing. Why don't governments step in and help? Even if you're thinking purely from a financial standpoint, it's hard to see how they don't ROI on taxes from people being able to work again. That he's 100% right. And the reason is because... Um, we hate poor people. We hate. No, we hate the poor reason people. is because we can make more people money. Losers. We can make more money off of this. Money. That's the whole money. point. It's like uh, we are so desperately looking at any avenue we can to just squeeze out like the remainder profits that we can. And America is like accelerated on the capitalism, uh, on the on the stages of capitalism, I guess, than other countries in the sense that like. It's, it's conducting self-harm to its labor force, to its citizens, specifically so it can make more money in the stock market and in general drive more profits. Because it's profitable. I think, especially I think because Americans hate poor people. They don't want to help other people. They think that they should help themselves. Well, Steinbeck, it, Steinbeck is, is, has the wonderful quote on this. Mm -hmm. Socialism will never work. I mean, I guess it's... Paraphr I'm paraphrasing it, and it's attributed to Steinbeck. But he says socialism will never work in America because the working class do not see themselves as a, the exploited proletariat, but instead temporarily embarrassed millionaires. I think that was Mark Twain. It's attributed to Steinbeck, but I don't think it's it's I don't think it's either of them. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. it up right now. But but yeah. But it makes sense if it is Steinbeck, exactly right? Because we have this rugged individualism. And people, especially poor people who are like, I'm barely rich enough to afford that. Then they go, I'm not, I don't want none of my taxes going. They get obsessed with like, this is my money. Fixing yeah. these goddamn homeless degenerates. Money. Money. They're like, I cannot see. I cannot work. Go flip a burger, you degenerate. I cannot see. Well, that's your problem. Maybe your mama shouldn't fuck their cousin. See y'all, partners. It's just, it, it is, it is unimaginably cruel and it's very frustrating anytime I fucking see like the feel good stories that they run in the media specifically to be like, see, we have the, we have the power to take, you know, matters into our own hands and save ourselves. And it's like, bro, everywhere else, like in fucking Brazil, people aren't thinking about this in the same That's way. What, yeah. So in his video, something that stood out to me. Is he lists all these other countries that he's going to to help people yeah. with uh, preventable blindness? So it's like America, and then the other shit was like uh, he's just all third African world. nations, yeah, like yeah. all third. all developing countries. It's America and then developing nations because yeah. America is a third world country with a Gucci belt, straight up. Jamaica, here, let's see. Yeah, this all as many people as of possible. Western imperialism. Me Mexico won't surprise me a little bit, but I guess we looked into that because Mexico does have universal. I guess it's just a really long wait to get it done. Honduras, Indonesia, Brazil, Vietnam, in Brazil Kenya. It's free too. In Vietnam, it's like also Jamaica, and and where we had the biggest impact of all, America. Yeah. It's crazy though. Like as far as as far as looking at those countries, dead incurable blindness. <laughs> Baseball no. games and picnics in July. Curable blindness. What is curable that? Curable blindness. It's just ten minutes with the needle, and you can see once again. That's America. That's All right. America. Number one in police brutality per capita. <coughs> number one in like uh, the the prisoner population on the planet in totality, but also uh, uh, per capita. You know, number one in medical debt. It's just we're we are number one, baby, in like all the fucking worst ways that you could think. Um, it was Steinbeck actually. No, it is un yeah. it, it is misattributed to Steinbeck regularly.
I'm pretty sure it's not actually. What what I'm seeing is that the 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 version uh, temporarily embarrassed millionaires is is not like that's a later corruption of the actual quote, which is that everyone is a temporarily embarrassed capitalist, and that is Steinbeck. He did say that. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So I think the video, you know, it exposes something really fucked up about our country, and that's why I think people were having a reaction, not to Jimmy who obviously is doing a good thing. He's putting his money out there to help people, and that's awesome. But uh, we, I don't. nobody wants to see how much we're actually failing the people of this country. I think the funnier part about that quote that I have to also mention, the original quote, is uh, uh, from A Short History in Progress by Ronald Wright, um, and something that he has, like, Steinbeck has talked about regularly about communists is that he says, I guess the trouble was that we didn't have any self-admitted proletarians, people who are, you know, proud right, of being working right. class. Everyone was a temporarily embarrassed capitalist. Maybe the communists so closely questioned by the investigation committees were a danger to America, but the ones I knew, at least they admitted to be communists, couldn't have, couldn't have disrupted a Sunday school picnic. Besides, they were too busy fighting amongst themselves. Some things mm. never change. Funny. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, the average price for this surgery in the United States is $7,000. It takes 15 minutes to perform. That's a lot of money for a $15 operation, a 15 minute operation. Yeah. But if it's just putting a little vacuum shit, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Just train, like, we don't need, why do we need doctors? Just train someone with a little vacuum and put, get it in there and suck that shit out, bro. Dude, I'm not even joking. Wait, are you? See no, dude. Of course not. What no, the fuck? No, but if, if it's just That's literally like the libertarian solution. Absolutely not. No, listen not. to what I'm saying, bro. If it's just if you just need them to do this one procedure, you can learn how to do it and do it super cheap for a ton of people. Bro, the problem is not that like qualifications are too high to do medical procedures. No, but this one, we gotta, we gotta, let's get people in there and start sucking, bro. <laughs> Sucks! <laughs> What's funny about that is like, when something goes sideways, you start like gushing blood out of an eyeball artery. He's like, oh, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm letting... Yeah, but no. if you can't see... <laughs> Then, like, what do you have to lose to go to fucking... Dude, that's crazy. You know, Dude, you Jeff, are literally... Jeff's eyeball sucker chop. <laughs> okay, you are unironically making, like, the Milton Friedman argument right now. I'm not this even... Is like, this is, like, the hyper-libertarian solution. Dude, I'm not saying open-heart surgery should be done by, like, your no. neighbor, Barbara. All, all medical I'm just procedures saying, I'm saying the conducted. eyeball shit, I'm saying... Let's no get some. Let's get some suckers. I, I am not in agreement there. No, here's the real solution. You you are wrong. What you should do is not deregulate medicine, but instead make it free to educate people, so we have more fucking doctors. It's and cheaper. My way's cheaper. And also have a public healthcare structure, a nationalized healthcare structure, where doctors have to do a couple years in rural hospitals, so we can finally have better medicine in rural areas because currently as it stands even though healthcare is not considered well hospital uh, administration is not considered profitable and therefore there aren't enough uh, you know rural hospitals it's not profitable anywhere it's already it's already being operated by like you know wealthy donors and and uh, and, and government spending make it so that doctors have to go and work I, in rural I, I have an idea how about this there's a clinic, Ethan's Eyeball Sucker, and then you have, a, hold on, hear me out. So you have eight rooms with trained, trained folks with the Eyeball Sucker, and then you have one doctor there, so if something goes wrong, they could, if the eyeball starts to die, or their blood, did they have go into red alert, blue no. code, the doctor comes in and can help out. Hold no. it. That sounds horrific. Yeah, but you know what's horrific? Not seeing when you can see. Now, I, I understand why you have this opinion, but I can see a million ways that this goes wrong, and you're basically saying, listen, like, you know, poor people who can't get their shit fixed, like, yeah, they're going to get some lower quality health care, but, you know, it's a... Better than it's a nothing. Good, no, that's an awful way to look at it. That's, like, that is the... Is it? Yes, Ethan, that's crazy. It's no. better than nothing, dude. No, you need to, you need like to if ensure I'm, that if I'm everyone like homeless, gets quality health care. Look, obviously that's not the ideal solution, right? 
obviously. It's it's not a good solution it's at all. It's not the ideal it's solution. It's one shared by many libertarians, too. I'm just, I'm uh, letting Listen, you I don't know. care about what libertarians care about, okay? Fuck, they can all go die in a fire. I don't care. <laughs> this is me. I am... Metaphorically. I'm thi- well, what am, what am I? I don't have a fire. I'm not throwing anyone to a fire, right? <laughs> you don't have a fire. I can wish death. He doesn't have access to fire. I can, I can... You can't <laughs> anything. Let's see. Let's move. I'm not going to... Let's get off the death. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... I'm not saying it's the ideal solution, but it is a solution. Yes, I right? mean, it yeah, is a solution. I, I, I acknowledge that. Of it is a solution. It's a solution. There are Got plenty, him. It just, but if it's not a good solution, Ethan. It's a bad one because it, it's one that would lead to many, many complications <laughs> down the line, long-term consequences. It's literally... You don't know that. Why You're do just we, saying that. Why do we need you abortion clinics? You don't know clinics? that. Why do we need abortion clinics? Why do we need abortion facilities? People could technically do back alley abortions. What happens when people do back alley abortions by like? Oh, this isn't back alley. Random though. untrained people who are like trying to offer them help with like you know. Uh, uh, I'm not saying them... back alley fucking cataract surgery. I'm saying Ethan's eyeball sucking. I chat. feel like highly I feel trained like cataract <laughs> surgery is a little bit more complicated than taking an abortion pill, which you can now at this point do at home. Uh, when the moment that we talk about surgery, even if it's just a little suck. I think that that is still a very complicated process and it should be handled by medical professionals, not just people who are like, you know, learning about eyeball suck. Listen, we just did a poll. 32% says they would let me suck their eyeball. And they're yeah. not even blind, probably. 66% says no. It's sucks. Yeah, but still 30% It's, look, it's not lot. looking good, Ethan. Uh, uh, no, but you're, you're missing the, the plot. You're missing the, the real point is While 30% said yes. While sucking a- <laughs> That's a business. The we principle business. behind what you're advocating for is exactly why Milton Friedman uh, would advocate for the Ford Pinto to continue Bro, I'm not co-signing Milton. I don't even no, co-sign know, anybody named Milton. I know, but the principle is the same because, like... You're basically saying individuals as consumers have the responsibility to make rational choices in the market and therefore government regulation should be abolished in this field or at least like deregulated because ultimately if you die and you get a Ford Pinto, if your fucking car explodes and when you're in the process of driving it, it's not up to Ford and it's not up to the government to make sure that there are standards that they need to abide by. It's up to the individual consumer that made the choice. And if they're poor, they made the wrong choice by getting a Pinto. But at least they got a car for the process before it exploded on them. Bro, I don't even know what you're talking about. I just want to suck people's eyeballs. Okay. I think I found a video. Listen, I want to show you this, okay? How hard is it? Can we train? To be honest, it looks pretty hard. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, God. That's really hard to look at. I don't. I think it's fine. It's a medical. I mean, it's not graphic. It's not even bloody. I yeah, mean, well, I guess you want you want some motherfucker that's not Full a doctor that. to do that. this. Yeah. Well, hold on. Let, let's. I just want to see. I want to see how how easy. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty gnarly. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah, I'm pretty sure I would rather have this be. You know, like have highly have trained qualifications for this, dude. <gasps> Yeah, I'm not saying they shouldn't be highly trained. Yeah, Jesus, play the Chestnut gnarly. song over this instead. How about that? Hassan <laughs> said it, not me. <laughs> play after, it. After watching this, Ethan, I, I, I don't, I don't think I want to talk about my my eyeball. procedures. Like, what the oh, fuck? No. We are literally, we are not living in the 14th century. Okay, That's we're in 2023. Gnarly. We already know that this shit. <laughs> Is like super hard to do. Oh what God. the wild? Fuck? This is honestly that's a crazy. lot of stuff on there. <laughs> Ethan's like, I don't get it. Like, what's the deal with surgery? You just like cut someone. Bro, get a I'm not talking to do about it. open heart. <laughs> Damn. I mean, that's the same like caveman fucking attitude that people had in like wow. the. That was wild to see, though. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I could oh. do that. I could do that. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> it's just a little sucky sucky. Yeah, like you yeah. You practice, you get a VR, you get a little eyeball. Ethan, you, I'm seeing this yeah. video is actually advertising cataractcoach.com. Maybe this is, maybe hey. you could get coached. Hey. No, that's, hey. the, that's the worst part. So, so um, optometrists are like... Uh, like I get the, that off screen. A lot of the, the vision uh, as a part of like healthcare is usually not like fully covered by insurance almost globally. And part of that is because like it is a very privatized sector and they maintain low prices on some of the things. 
Uh, I think like LASIK in general, like LASIK eye surgery, is one that like libertarians always talk about. Is it LASIK eye surgery? Let me. I think I don't the are a lot of shit now. I think it's a lot of private companies that do the LASIK. Yeah. Stuff. So like, they're always they always use that as like, a, well, look how easy it is to do LASIK eye surgery. Like, and that's because it's deregulated. And I'm like, nope, fuck it. Get let the government pay for it. Make sure that the people doing it are. You know, make sure the people what about doing this? it are no, what knowledgeable. About, Cause you gotta go to, you gotta go to the doc, to become a doctor, it's like eight, 12 years, something like that, right, of school, on top of your bachelor's. So let's say this, eyeball sucking school, one year, all about eyeball sucking. They'll be more trained than a doctor. You think doctors do one year on eyeball sucking? Hell no. One year I don't know the, I don't I'm know the process, but I'm sure that you need to learn everything about like, the brain and human anatomy before you can do eyeball sucking. Also, You're ultimately going to come around to my argument, which is that like you need in order to become a doctor, you definitely need training and you definitely need right. a fuckload of Let's knowledge. Pull up this and it's not about like deregulating uh, that aspect, deregulating the training aspect. It's more so about uh, making it so that more doctors can exist by depleting the the financial component i mean uh, making it easier for people to become doctors in general yeah tim pool was advocating for tim pool is actually with us this is a, a a moment of clarity for our country mr beast is galvanizing everybody to make cataract surgery accessible this year hassan biker <laughs> wait having seen that video would you let ethan suck your eyeball <laughs> It's still 22% says yeah. So there's still 20. Yeah, I did a new poll uh, post video to see what the change was. I in. guarantee the yes you guys, gone down a, if a bit. somebody came from eyeball sucking school after one year and they sat here, they'd be they'd have all the facts, bro, and y'all be with 99% suck me daddy. Anyway, whatever. Somebody, uh, uh, a uh, <laughs> fan just left a message. I'm studying optometry. And the space you're working with in a cataract surgery is like one tenth of a millimeter. But I think Ethan could do it. That's there it is, baby. <laughs> the fans. You're love not helping, it. Jay. <laughs> yeah, this, this video small, this changed small. my mind. Ethan's got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, y'all are dude, freaks. Dude. The smaller the space, the less work. Yeah. Okay. The good thing. The good thing. Yeah, why do we need med school, bro? People are fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> no, med school is good. Med school is it, good. It's just so it, it's it's bankrupt, dude. It's defunct. It's just silly. You don't need that kind of training. Didn't say that. that. <laughs> you watch this video, you go, oh, how how cute and how nice. I watch the video and I'm filled with rage. That, What's like, wrong? You. That we shut off access to a 10 minute procedure because we paywalled it and decided that like some people just simply can't get it. It is so insanely frustrating That's that it true. like it, it's up to like people who are too poor. Where's Tim talking about it? I just heard us on say all that. Uh, it in two seconds. He's literally in the room with me. Dextero have... says Twitch streamer Hassan Beast. <laughs> Dextero you have like an uncanny surgery? ability Treated to concept. pause things right before it gets <laughs> to the relevant He's part. right. <laughs> he's not ragging on Mr. Beast. Oh. Dextero says Twitch streamer oh Hassan explained why he's filled with rage from watching Mr. Beast's newest video where he cures a thousand people's blindness. He's right. Why is it up to one YouTube guy to make content Whoa, off of this, which will generate money? To, to, to do Don't that, worry, I just, it's mind-blowing to me. He's right and there, man. He doesn't even fully go uh, off the rails, in my opinion. Like, he just, he just, look, I'll just give you the short and sweet of it. I covered this yesterday as well. He's actually mad about my coverage of it because, like, one of my fucking fan channels, Hassan Abe Productions, posted it, like, you know, Tim Pool calls out Hassan Piker or whatever when, like, he was agreeing with me. And, you know, fucking Hassan Abe Productions doing clickbait again, getting me in trouble. But um, he basically says... The government is spending a hundred billion dollars in Ukraine. The government is giving millions of dollars to do like, uh, you know, uh, gender education in Pakistan or whatever. He Why is, the fuck yeah. are they spending that money on that? They should <sighs> just be spending the money here on healthcare, which I agree. Okay, I agree. But I was making of uh, making fun of Tim Pool, saying like, yeah, the fucking the 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 gender thing is true. Okay, the foreign the the State Department does shit like that specifically for PR because they want the liberals in America to be like, oh yeah, uh, you know, our our military machine isn't just about uh, endless uh, bloodshed and and uh, extracting natural resources from the third world by force. It's actually about 
teaching people in Pakistani madrasas about they, them, non-binary people. Like, it's not. It's just a fucking, that's literally a blip on the radar. It's just. I love that's like. That. It's ten million dollars. Yeah, is nothing. Is that? That's of the national budget. And I fucking doubt that that actually ends up going to the, a program like that, dude. If you if you express that as like a percentage of the national budget, it'll look like safe one safe moon's value. You know what I mean? One, yeah. One crypto it's nothing. Zoo. It's nothing. And he like yeah. misunderstood and he got mad. He was like, even when I'm defending Hassan, like, why is he fucking attacking me? And I was like, bro, it's a fucking fan account. Like, good research there, Tim. Yeah, he said you don't do your. T- t- he says I didn't do my research, but I actually did. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't say that the government is not actually, you know, spending money on on teaching people in Pakistan about being non-binary or whatever. I I know that there is a blip on the there's a blip in the overall part the, budget. Part of the funding agreement for Ukraine is they have to put kitty litter boxes in public <laughs> bathrooms for yeah. all the yeah. the cat girls to use. We we are not. We're we're not in Ukraine because we want emancipation for Ukrainian people. We're in Ukraine because we needed to reappropriate the budgets from Afghanistan to like another avenue, and this was perfect. True, King. Let's talk about. Let's move on to uh, Stephen Crowder being a bisexual god, King. Let's do it now. Crowder, of course, who's gotten into controversy uh, with Ben Shapiro of all people and all the folks down at the Daily Wire. Now, this is significant because I don't think gay people are allowed to join, or bisexual people are allowed to join the Daily Wire. So this could affect their negotiating status there. Um, Right after we got off the air last week, somebody, this four-year-old clip of him flew totally under the radar. I sent this to you immediately, and you were shocked by it too. I don't know how any of us didn't see this until now. But this is Steven Crowder... Basically, in a very vulnerable moment, admitting that he's been with men, I believe. Let's take Today, maybe not necessarily uh, been with gay. Well, what does he mean? At least had some phase. Maybe just attraction, or like just nah. considered it. Because that's what he experiences every day. The man's attracted to men, but he acted on it. That's what the bisexual phase he's referring to. Maybe. Well, let's call, just watch the video and we'll yeah. make our we'll make up our Sometimes minds you have one to make more, hard once more. It's from an episode called something about fear. He's having like a really open. This is a heartfelt, yeah. fourteen minute video by Steven Crowder yes. from four years prior, I believe, if not maybe a little bit older than that. Was, is this from twenty fourteen or is it? It's four years ago, where he has like he talks about his biggest fears. He talks about all of this like emotional stuff, and in between that. This got lost in the weeds, I guess. He has a he has a heartfelt moment where he's talking about, you know, let's just let's just play the video. Let's let's hear what he what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's called cr- close or Crowder closes closes defeating fear. So this yeah. is a very serious video. And now let's take a look. And sometimes you think you have to make hard decisions, and it's just wrong. I'm afraid of that. Uh, I'm afraid of. I'm afraid, frankly, that he used to have a bad temper. I'm afraid of it coming back. I'm afraid of. Mr. This man has a gun on his desk talking about how he has a bad temper. Chill, bro. What do you mean, brother? He's I'm on the edge. He know he knows how to I'm handle pa- that. He's got proper proper training. I've got an issue with anger. And I'm always within te- one foot of a gun. Mr. Hyde rearing his ugly bisexual head. That was a sm- that was a short face. You fucking um, paused it right no, before I'm, I'm Ethan. God damn it. Play well, it again. Zach hit the br- br- <laughs> Which made it? Yeah, hard. and and Zach, you played a soundbite right over it too. Br- br- what are you guys doing? I played it after. Played it from like oh, you said I it second. It, I played it, it after. Br- br- I'm afraid of it coming back. I'm afraid of Mr. Hyde rearing his ugly bisexual head. That was a sm- that was a short phase. Um, no, I'm I'm afraid. Afraid of afraid of getting angry. Wasn't that so interesting? Yeah, he said. He's afraid of Mr. Hyde rearing his bisexual head. Ugly bisexual his head. His ugly bisexual head. Um, short phase in college. It was just college. a short phase in college. Which now, I, I think I'm interpreting that as he had some kind of sexual interaction with the man. As he says, it was a short phase Or, or attraction, which is valid. You know, here's the thing. Uh, we know for a fact that he was an abstinence-only guy <laughs> until marriage. He like was very proud of that fact. Um, he's advocated for it numerous times, and uh, we know that he's coming from a repressed family. 
There's rainbows in chat for Crowder, by the way. I yeah. appreciate y'all supporting him. Couple things to obviously make note of. Not uh, not every single uh, there is there is a significantly larger amount of straight people that just hate gay people than there are repressed homosexuals. Okay, so that's number Sometimes one. You have to before people fucking jump down Ethan and I's this throat. This man literally just said he's bisexual. Like, what do you want? <laughs> um, so that's number one. Like, when, whenever, you see, whenever you see someone them. who's, like, you know, homophobic, that doesn't immediately <clears throat> imply that they themselves are gay, right? We're not blaming homophobia on gay people. Um, but every gay person and, you know, everyone that understands Steven Crowder's uh, library of content will tell you that he's zesty as fuck, okay? My man's fruity. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say it. Do you understand? He's he is. He's, he loves dress cross There's a lot going on. There's a lot. Dude, he cross-dresses way too much. And I'm saying this as a guy who's done, like, drag and cross-dress. Like, well, he cross-dresses as more than George Santos. Right. A gay man who openly has now admitted to watching uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. You know what? We need to call his show Prouder with Crowder. Yeah. If he was a little bit prouder, if he was a little bit prouder, maybe he wouldn't be so fucking angry all the time. And you know what? Yeah, the, I don't think you can cross dress too much. I think he's just re he's like on a dime's notice. He's that man is ready to put on a dress and express himself proudly. There is not there was a point in time before like Republicans decided that like doing drag meant that you're like satanic pedophile or whatever. There was a point in time before like, you know, drag is a long culture, long history. It's a it's a big part of theater in general. Um and Steven Crowder used to do it literally for anything and everything. Not just like women's issues, not just to like make fun of trans people or whatever, but he would do drag for like random shit like uh like Planet Fitness, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna wear a dress. Like, dude, you're doing a doing a video on tort reform why the fuck are you in a dress <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what i mean what the fuck's going on right i now? love those videos of him like it just it felt like it was genuine like he was you know doing the thing where he's like Haha, like well I of course the, what's interesting about this is that he is homophobic and he has garnered an extremely homophobic audience um and what's really interesting actually i pulled up a screenshot of the live chat i don't know if you saw it but his fans when he said that in the live chat they're like shame on you crowder did he just oh, really? say he's bisexual? It wasn't That's the live disgusting. chat. It was, just, it was just the comment section. Oh, it's the comment. Wait, wait. In the, oh, really? Someone in our chat just said, you can be straight and do drag, like, you know, sad face or whatever. It's like, yeah, I'm straight, and I just said I, yeah, I've course. done drag. Like, I, that's not what I'm saying at all. Don't misunderstand me. He's The, the man right. wants to express himself, and that's the only way he can. Oh, this is straight from the comments? Uh, yeah, I just, um... I have an extension that allows you to search comments, so Wait. I just uh, I just put "by" in there, Bro. and uh, his fans were raising eyebrows. Three years ago, this man said, "Proud of you for coming out." Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he he, it, it's not a phase. I don't think you know what I mean. I don't think he was just like questioning. I think he's just like repressing it. A lot of, uh, here, I'll give you an example of someone who I don't think is gay at all that hates all queer people. Matt fucking Walsh. Like, you won't hear me say no, that no, dude no. is gay. Yeah, no, he's, no. Just, he's just a He's demon. just a bigot. Yeah, he's just an awful fucking bigoted piece of shit. Uh, and that, that shit's, you know, that's just internally in him. Not, not because, like, he's internalizing it or anything. He's just, you know, he feels it in his heart. As a straight person. This sure. is some of the comments on that video, just to give you an idea of why he's repressing this and the kind of, you know, audience he's built. Shame on Crowder for being bisexual. He said he's bisexual. Crowder's disgusting. Did you say you had a bisexual phase? Is that a joke? Glad that Crowder came out proud of you. Uh, that one I like. Does Crowder admit that he has a bisexual phase? Your bisexual hide? Uh, Even Crowder himself has said in the past that, like, if you claim you're bisexual as a guy... You're gay, lol, which I think he now has deleted. This, well, and hmm. uh, now, because you, I think we know what, who he's talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Which, by the way, is not true, you know, by visibility, <laughs> by pride, okay? Uh, you know, the only time we do by invisibility is when we were talking about Kristen Cinema. Uh, all other <laughs> times, by visibility all day. Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, he, he might be bi, he might be gay. 
But uh, and we that, love that for him. But and, the, I, and I encourage you, Stephen, and I welcome you to join us for a Pride Minute. And maybe that's a good way to get his toes wet because I think, as Jordan Peterson aptly pointed out, Pride Month is way too fucking long. So if we can get him into a Pride Minute, maybe that's a good way to wet his toes. And uh, Pride see is that not the, a virtue. See that the water is nice and warm over here. But since we've been talking about this clip, Crowder has disappeared from the internet. Yeah, he hasn't posted a lot. He hasn't I, I, posted anything. Candace Owens kind of came after him and said, like, y'all should pray for him. Bless his heart. You yeah. know what I mean? That sort of thing. And yeah. I haven't really seen a lot of activity from Steven Crowder since then. I, I've, I actually spent a decent amount of time last night kind of trying to find out what's going on with this channel. And I think what it is is, you know, he got dropped by the blaze. He got dropped? It, I think it's It was mutual. And, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, whatever. He, he was way more tight-lipped about that than he was with the Daily Wire stuff. He seemed to not want to get into the weeds on it. But ever since then, all the content that he's really posted was this whole war with Daily Wire. Um, if you go to his channel, those are the only video, recent videos at all. And since that last one where he you know, played the <coughs> secret recording that he made, that's the last thing that's been posted to his YouTube channel at all. Dude, um, I... So I don't know. It's possible they're just on vacation or something. I, I don't know if you want to read into that too much. Well, nobody wants to work anymore, man. Yeah. What's fucking up? lazy. <laughs> He's fucking lazy. quiet quitting, dude. <laughs> so true. What the fuck is this shit? Get to Show work, up work, you lazy work fuck. Harder. Fuck yep. you. Show up at work. Thank yeah, exactly. You. That's how we feel. But yeah, the last thing was that uh, Candy, Candy was the threatening to expose his, we're inferring, homosexuality. So he is hiding. He's in hiding right now. Now, here's well, the thing. Yeah, Come over to us. Good. We accept you for who you are, bro. He's even been silent on Twitter. Like, I looked through his likes. He's liked one or two posts. Um, but that's about it. He hasn't really tweeted. Have any conservatives reacted to this clip? Like, any of his fans? Like, I'm really curious what they'll think about this. I mean, a lot of the, like, alt-right yeah, shithead alt -right type people are, like, ragging on him, you know. For this? Yeah, of course. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it's all like, it's all like, uh, you know, far right freaks that yeah, have yeah. like been making fun of him for years about this, uh, I guess. Okay. That's why, like, a lot of the people that pull data from this or anything resembling like something that might look like Steven Crowder is like admitting or acknowledging being gay or whatever is always like from the Odin Benjamin stuff or something. Wait. That guy's a fucking major piece of shit. Fuck that guy. Wait, here, how about this one? In the closet with Crowder. That's from chat. Don't blame me. Okay. No. Nope. Crowder with Crowder's better. Crowder with Crowder. Well, because yeah. it actually, yeah, I mean, it's a better play off of his real title. Well, there it is. Crowder, you have two choices to make. You can go back to the alt-right freaks who hate you, or you can come to me and Hassan with open arms who accepts you for who you are. I mean, I, I'll accept him for who he is, but he's still a fucking piece of shit, you know? <laughs> like He's ready to guy. change, though, man. You don't even have to think about it, dude. You know, he, he's, yeah, he's He's got a long a way. Yeah. Uh, no, there's a redemption for that to happen. Yeah, of course, there's a redemption for everyone, but I'm just saying. There is? What about Bill Cosby? Even for... I think, yeah, even, even, yeah, I think even, I've said this before. I, Bill, what's Bill Cosby's firm, redemption road look I'm like? a firm believer in rehabilitation. I think, like, Bill Cosby's unique because he's, like, so old um, and, and so uh, grounded within his, like, and he, he barely with OJ punishment. Simpson? I think every single person, uh, with some exceptions, Maxwell. Okay, good. Every single person, with some Elaine? exceptions, <laughs> can and uh, can be rehabilitated, and they our focus should always be on rehabilitation, one hundred percent, and this reintegration into society. Is this real? He's doing a stand up. Yeah, I guess Louisville. <laughs> no, shit. he's out there. He's working. I guess he's doing things. I guess the show is just maybe on extended hiatus because of all the God drama has gone Can on. You imagine For the record, I just want to like... point out one more thing about the with the redemption or rehabilitation argument. The reason why I said there are notable exceptions is because like there are still things that we do not have a good grasp on, especially with respect to like antisocial personality disorder or like crimes caused by that, specifically pedophilia, sexual uh, sexually violent crimes, and like serial killers and whatnot. But with those notable exceptions, which may change in the future, we may figure out 
I mean, we already um, figured brain out. Is, it's called a lobotomy, bro. But that's like, no, that doesn't, you know, you can't do that. That's oh, okay. insane. I, I wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but ultimately, a lot of crime is, like the overwhelming majority of crime is a product of our material conditions that we're subjected to. And therefore, obviously, I will always advocate to fix the underlying reasons as to why crime manifests rather than uh, focus on, you know, punishing criminals harder because if Woody punishing Allen. criminals Allen if punishing criminals harder what Woody Allen yeah like a lot of times you're you're pointing to people who have never faced accountability mm. and accountability and and also like serving time is still a fundament plays a fundamental role in in rehabilitation mm. so of course when you talk about people like Bill Cosby or Woody Allen or or uh Roman Polanski and whatnot like these are people who either faced very little consequences for their actions uh, and, and never even offered restitution for the victims or whatever, even acknowledged their crimes. Um, and, and they basically got away with it, which is the reason why like, they're not the best example to use. Well, we love, we love rehabilitation here, don't we, folks? Uh, we love to redeem. In fact, <laughs> some, some have called me Jesus Christ for that reason, and... I accept it without uh, any pushback. Okay. Let's talk about, and you came before me, Lord, and said, Jesus, I have fucked 20 children. Oh my God. And I said to you, blessed be my son. I shall redeem you. I shall castrate you. Castration? Is that part of redemption? No, because oh. Harvey Weinstein's dick was like <laughs> horrifically scarred from gangrene, and yet he still so successfully that... raped, you know, <laughs> like almost a hundred women. Because that's was what a lot of people many? don't understand. Chemical castration or castration in general is not an <laughs> adequate punishment because, like, <clears throat> rape is not about sexual gratification. Rape right. can give you sexual gratification, but it's about power. It's about exercising power over someone who cannot consent. So, therefore, you can still do digital penetration. Therefore, you can mm. still violate someone's uh, bodily see. autonomy in different ways. So, lobotomy is kind of the only option I'm seeing for them. But even then, <sighs> then you come, then you arrive at the same concept as the death penalty, which right. is like, what if you are lobotomizing someone who is innocent? Right. right? Like that. That's but I like, I like lobotomy because it's like death sentence light. I am not an advocate for lobotomy. Ethan. We can put it. We can put the piece of their Ethan's brain. Out here hey, like hold the on, I, Kennedys, dude. I have an idea. We'll put the little piece of their brain on ice, and if we find out they're innocent, we'll just put it back where we found it. Thoughts? I don't know if it works that way. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Thank you. Uh, we're getting now to the presidential primaries of between Trump and Distinky. Ron Distinky is heating up. And we are here for it. Trump is already kicking off his re-election campaign and bringing the heat to DeSantis. Let's see what he has to say. I've been governor if it wasn't for me, and that's okay. Uh, and uh, he, number one, he wouldn't have gotten the nomination. And number two, he wouldn't have beaten uh, the de his Democrat opponent. <laughs> so well, then when I hear he might run, you know, I consider that very disloyal, but it's not about loyalty, but to me it is. It's always about loyalty, but for a lot of people, it's not about loyalty. Are you surprised to see him? He's a mob. I love how, how mobster Trump is. It's awesome. Yeah, he's badass. Um, Ron Distinky has nothing on him, okay? I'll just say it. No, after no, seeing no. him just at the funeral, this. after seeing him at the Diamond funeral, like, I was like, my man's kind of back. He needs, to, yeah, he, he needs to come back and do more of that shit uh, straight up. As far as, like, Ron DeStinky, <coughs> when he talks about DeSantis and how, like, he almost lost to Andrew Gillum, it's true. Andrew Gillum was, like, the up-and-comer in the Democratic Party, uh, propped up by Obama himself, young uh, black man, who then uh, uh, turned out to be a fan of doing meth with uh, gay prostitutes at the Fountain Blue. They all are, man. Which is, all the best which, ones by the are. way, I think is awesome. Okay, yeah. I don't have an issue with that. I'm I think thinking that I gotta him, try it because it sounds I, really fun. But I how many think people that are doing makes it? him the perfect candidate for Florida. <laughs> right, He's just a man of the people, and also objectively, still more ethical than whatever the fuck uh, uh, Voldemort did before Ron DeSantis, like human trafficking immigrants. 
Well, Ron DeSantis, oh, human trafficking, Rick, against, but Rick, I was talking about Rick yeah. Scott, yeah, Rick. who, uh, you know, did Medicare fraud. <laughs> so <laughs> we love that. But anyway, DeSantis is actually taking the bait now and responding to Trump. So things are heating up, my friends. This is what I'm living for. Um, I roll out of bed. I have people attacking me from all angles. It's been happening for many, many years. And if you look at the good thing about it, though, is like if you take a crisis situation like COVID, you know, the good thing about it is when you're an elected executive, you have to make all kinds of decisions. You've got to steer that ship. And the good thing is, is that the people are able to render a judgment on that, whether they reelect you or not. And I'm happy to say, you know, in my case, not only did we win reelection, we won with the highest percentage of the vote that any Republican governor candidate has. Dude, in the history. he just fucking torched him with that. Is Ron DeSantis, uh, has he spoken out about the election being uh, fixed? Uh, well, I mean, he did the election, uh, he did the the cops that like went into people's uh, houses and <laughs> no, but like about the arrested presidential. them and stuff. Um, he has talked about it a little because bit it, when I, he was like riding for Trump. I just find it funny because he's Not like, "Oh yeah, I won by the biggest margin ever." Well, I was like, hmm, "Here's the vote the works thing. there." Here's the thing about election fraud, and this is a point that I made many times over, and I think I need to make it again. It's not just Trump that has talked about election fraud. He's not the first, and he will certainly not be the last. Election, or not election fraud, voter fraud is a vehicle, is a propaganda piece that the Republican Party has used historically to undermine the integrity of elections so they can continue justifying voter suppression, like closing polls, uh, closing places uh, where there are, uh, you know, Closing polling stations in poorer neighborhoods, black and brown communities specifically, and also implementing like uh, signature verification processes or voter ID laws that also, again, disproportionately stop poorer people from going out to vote, making sure that voting is happening on a work day in the middle of the fucking day. Uh, you know, these are these are all many different ways in which uh, those in positions of power, whether it be Democrat or Republican, have tried to actively stop the working poor from going out and participating in uh, their civic duty. So they will continue to lie about it. It's not just about Trump. It's not the big lie that Trump promoted. I think the liberals uh, kind of fail uh, when they, when they uh, make this a Trump thing. But yeah. Well, we don't have to worry about that because his new culture war is gas stoves, my friend. Yes. Which ironic because Florida, majority electric stoves. Florida does not have the same kind of gas infrastructure that California has. The 68% of the country uses electric stoves and the overwhelming majority of Florida already use electric stoves. They do not use gas stoves. He's just straight up doing this specifically because it's a culture war talking point. It's so fucking stupid. It's so insane how they construct <laughs> oh, these things. Like, they, they've created this fiction. I guess there was some research that showed that having gas stoves in your house can make the air really unhealthy. Yeah, and, especially for kids. And I don't particular. know why, like, why are they just figuring that out? Like, you have an open flame in your house. You're burning gas in your house. Why uh, from what I was reading, it's long been suspected, but it was just there was a, a, a large study that was just came out recently. And it was specifically about um, it being behind a lot of childhood asthma. That is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, There's well, a lot of gas is like not captured mm. adequately. Right. Um, well, so so anyway, they're they've created this fiction that now liberals are coming for their stoves. And uh, as silly as that sounds, that really is what they're saying. And then we just added, because I think it needs to be done, uh, no tax permanently on gas stoves. They want your gas stove, and we're not going to let that happen. And we're not even a state. The way Florida was built, a lot of this wasn't even connected to gas lines. You got they a lot want of your He's gas even acknowledging stove. It. He's acknowledging it. He's <laughs> acknowledging it. Yo, I just looked it up. It's even crazier than you said, Hassan. Uh, no, 68% of the entire country, overwhelming majority of Florida, though. 92%. Yeah. Electric stoves. Wait, in it's just Florida. It's just in California <laughs> where we have gas. California and other like uh, older, I guess like older cities that had gas lights uh, mm, yeah. that had a pre-built infrastructure for gas, mm -hmm. basically kept using gas stoves. Mm -hmm. And most other uh, more recent developments, 
more recent like uh, uh, city developments, you just use electric. Wait, the, how do they heat their AC and shit? Electric? Electric? Yeah. What do you mean? AC is already electric. What are you talking uh, about? No, like, isn't our central AC like gas powered? No. Yes, it is. AC it is burns gas. In California, yes. Yeah. Your water heater could either be electric or gas. Um, that's okay. So but the AC. Shouts out to to uh, I think it's Climate Town, right? They did a really really good video on this. Um, I highly recommend you guys check them out. Uh, Climate Town talked about this disparity long time ago. As a matter of fact, before this culture war even heated up. Gas stoves are the entry point into using uh, natural gas as a, as a heating substitute. So like when, when asked, uh, when you ask random people, like if their home is, uh, if their home is powered by gas or electric, they have no idea. But the only place where they do have a preference or or the only place where they do actually think about this is gas stoves versus electric stoves. Now, part of that is because electric stoves early on were not as powerful as gas stoves. It, I think, takes like four extra minutes to boil water on an electric stove in comparison to a gas stove, which is why the oil and gas industry dumped a lot of money into marketing for many, many years. The idea that uh, the, the, the colloquialism cooking with gas which is something that I use all the time. I'm sure you've used it before. That was literally a marketing technique by the oil and gas industry. How fucking crazy is that? that, is that it's been a, well, it's played such a fundamental role. Like that, that marketing technique has made its way into our language without us even recognizing it. And it plays a small, but still significant role in like people thinking that gas stoves are better than electric. And that's the only thing that, uh, that consumers have a preference on, but of course the the uh, the the oil and gas industry specifically want to maintain their profit margins, and they don't want to change the infrastructure because if the infrastructure is changed to focus on electricity, then all of a sudden they're gonna they're gonna lose a lot of revenue. I thought the gas was fine. I didn't think it was a big deal. Like the natural gas issue, I, th I thought it... I, I, for, for a very I, I long time, wrong. it was actually a cleaner alternative. It yes. burns pretty clean. We have a ton of it here in California. It's yeah. not that expensive because there's so much of it. So I, I thought that it was actually like a relatively good thing we had going. But am I wrong? Should I be going electric on my stoves? Um, induction stoves induction. are better than electric. Um, from what I understand, they're they're actually literally better than gas as well. Well, what's better mean? Better isn't like faster, heat up faster. And the only e difference more is like you just need stuff. like a specific induction uh, wok, for example. Like you can't use right. the same I think, kinds of yeah. Uh, okay, interesting. Well, um, I am coming for their stoves. Uh, you hear me? But it's yeah, it's because ninety three percent of the people in Florida are not even using gas. It's such a, a stupid ass. <laughs> Fucking s virtue signal. I, I'm looking at this. Yeah, I'm looking at this study, and <laughs> I think it actually is the highest of any state. Yeah, I love it's that. It's literally the highest. It's yeah. so easy for them to come out and be like, "Listen, I'm making the great sacrifice. We're yeah. not taxing the five gas stoves we've sold in the state." <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. no, it's just culture war shit, which is ironic though, because like a lot of places, a lot of places where conservatives live actually are like Florida where the majority of uh, majority of places use electric mm -hmm. which is why it's like this doesn't even impact them well I'm just I, advocating for like liberals to continue using gas I guess we're we're redoing our kitchen at my house and I was adamant about getting gas stoves they tried to get me on electric but you're I went fucking gas. dupe dog they got, they you, fucking dude. got you I like cooking with gas baby that's but but see that's the point like if you know you, what was my concern what I was like I'm gonna get these electric burners and in five to ten years these things are gonna be fucking like broken as shit because you know with like tech and all that shit well I mean your gonna, gas stove can break too and especially when your gas, like stove, gas stove gas stove yeah, lasts they, forever no they definitely break I have a gas stove in my house I guess and you're right the burner and it's a fucking up. yeah it's a melee one too and it's still fucking broken it breaks all the goddamn time everything breaks it's just everything is made to break but um, yeah, there is no, I, I don't, 
I don't think like gas stoves are particularly better. Nicole especially says less dangerous because if gas stoves break, you can fucking burn your house down. If electric stove breaks, I don't think you have. Yeah, to that's problems. always been what's so interesting to me about in California in particular having so much gas infrastructure and everything is that we get fucking earthquakes here. And when that happens, that's what starts like giant fires all over the place. I, rem I, I remember my family had to uh, have like an emergency turnoff in the 94 uh, Northridge <laughs> earthquake because it broke the gas line. Doesn't everybody have an emergency turnoff or is that a revelation after the Northridge earthquake? I was so young that I don't know. Like uh, I, I know, remember our... that being like a really scary thing that our family went through after that earthquake. Yeah. I know that like our house has an earthquake detector like an automatic, where an automatic will off. close it ours did not yeah i guess maybe that's a new thing because yeah, since maybe. then i think but yeah i don't know this uh nicole says that in uh conduction is expensive and requires special <laughs> cookware but should i switch should i go uh, i don't i mean uh, there the ira actually has a a uh financial incentive <laughs> built into it i'm pretty sure you can get like you get uh subsidized Really? Yeah, for, on the electric? for making a switch to uh, an electric stove. I think yeah. I already bought it. I think I might be fucked on that one. And they're, aren't they mandating new buildings now in California? Like, I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't be surprised. At but least I'm for, not. I think uh -oh. it's like, because I, I know there was like a controversy over it because a lot of um, restaurants, you know, cooks have their preferences and they're much more serious and, and dedicated to one side or the other. Even they, a they lot of, no, it. but even a lot of fucking cooks have been paid for by... <laughs> really? Oil, yes. Oh, my so God. So there was a marketing <laughs> campaign on Instagram from, like, Instagram chefs. They specifically looked at, like, uh, different demographics on who is more likely to be duped by this, I guess, and they found out that, like, young Latinos, like, up-and-coming uh, Latinos were, were... It was way more effective. So they went after, like, uh, Latino uh, chefs on Instagram. So, uh, Climate Town details this perfectly. Like I said, highly recommend the channel. Highly recommend that video. They're brilliant. Um, but uh, they, they, they had, like, young Latino chefs that were like, I prefer cooking with gas over electric <laughs> because it's much better. Like, it's more authentic. Don't more chefs prefer gas, though? That's real. There are a lot of chefs who still prefer gas. I think they, they like it old school. First of all, no one is a fucking real chef when we talk about this, so they don't they don't need the intricacies. But chefs there are chat. a lot of chefs who now also prefer uh, induction. So, right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, well, like I laid, well. I'm late on this. Electric discourse. used to electric yeah. stoves did used to suck. Like maybe they, they were inferior, yeah. but I think it, I think they've improved yeah, no, a lot. That, okay, that's okay. Why, yeah, I I agree with that. I guess I'm uh, late to this convo. So here she is. I I am a chef. I prefer gas for controllability. Induction is good, but gets too hot too fast. Sometimes, and but uh, pull pan off induction stove, and the stove will be cold. Electric stays hot for too long. Hmm. Gas forever, bro. You do not t lay your fucking fingers on my gas stove. I mean, I, I'm I'm a dirty little gas stove user. You know what I mean? But I am also a normal human being who has no preference or one over the other, and I don't think it will like genuinely impact my life. Also, as a homeowner, we're in a different uh, uh, situation than everyone else. Most people don't make these decisions. Their landlord makes these decisions. Right, yeah. It's I not going to change your fucking life, you know what I mean? I see lots of people riding for induction. Yeah. I do I've like heard that, it's really cool, too. I like that when you take the pan off, it's cold. And I mean, with someone with kids, that's like, right. you know, I don't... I, the true. stove is a scary thing. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool, actually. But... The only the, the purchase only, has been okay, made. The <sighs> only thing that the gas stove has over electric, which is why you will never pry it from my cold dead hands, is that you, you can, can light your it. cigarettes on it, boy. Well, no, you can. You toss a tortilla on that bad boy. All of oh a yeah, oh, that's just crispy, and like crispy exactly. fried tortilla. You ain't wrong. You ain't wrong. I mean, but that's that. I do use it for that. Do, I do. Doomsday <laughs> preppers prefer gas. That's just given. Yeah. How you got oh, oh, oh the apocalypse? How are you gonna use induction then? Yeah, on? they also prefer like Iraqi dinar and shit. So I don't think they're making a lot of. I don't think they're making a lot of sense. They probably prefer propane, right? They, What's propane? Well, like gasoline, it, yeah, yeah. my yeah. brother. Yep. Yeehaw! Get some glazies on the open flame. <laughs> and 
good one, man. They don't they got another one, man. Tell you what, man. But go over there. That dang gas and a freaking out of the grill. Don't let Combs there all the time. Tell them gas, man. Tell them gas, man. Good. Pretty good. Hill is coming back. I was about to say, yeah. It is. New episode? Yeah. Yeah. Greatest slice of life anime of all time. Absolutely incredible shit. I love that show. I hope it's not ruined. Well, is it Mike the, Judge also is, still is a performer Mike though. Mike Judge is coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like the, all the original all the original team. voice actors too. Yep, that's great. That's interesting. Yeah, but back to uh, the stinky here. Let's finish this. But it's just the principle of you know this is ridiculous that they and they do want to go. After oh God damn it! After it, they got blowback, so they kind of had to back off. They want to go what after are you the gas stoves, about, and so we're ask. saying you know we want you to be able to buy those uh, uh, free of charge to the five people. We want you to be, he's such a fucking <laughs> dumbass. It's so <laughs> transparent that they yeah. are like, that he's just trying to create a problem where no such problem exists, specifically for like the culture war narrative. But it's funny. It's funny that they're talking about this. Okay. It's funny that they're talking about this <clears throat> instead of like uh, talking about, you know, Joe Brandon's documents, right? Like, which to me, immediately points to the reality, the grim reality that the Joe Biden document drama did not work at all. Didn't it didn't use hit. Him enough. CNN's been talking about that shit way more than Fox News. I, th right. I think all the sales got sucked out of the document controversy because it was like, you're finding out now that basically every president is just incompetent and has top secret documents laying yeah. around. <laughs> but also, like, they're col they're they're working with the authorities. Like that was the main difference between Trump and well, and I thought everyone that nuance would be lost on Fox News viewers, but apparently they don't care. Yeah, they just don't give a shit about document mishandling. Um, so this is all based on this New York Times headline: gas gas stoves are tied to health concerns. Here's how to lower your risk. This this is uh, the existential threat that uh, Ron DeSantis is worried about. A study published last year found that families who use gas stoves in homes with poor ventilation or without range hoods can blow past the national standard for safe hourly outdoor exposure to nitrogen oxides within just a few minutes. So, it makes uh, our child, it, and it has a likelihood to increase childhood asthma, the likelihood of, of childhood asthma occurring. It is our God-given right to expose our children to toxic fumes. God damn it. Guess what? What's that? We're making our children's lungs stronger. <laughs> That's you right. Oh, herd immunity. I, I believe we need to go back to asbestos as well, and also lead chips in the paint of our children's toys. I that made what, our boy. children Hell more dangerous. Yeah. I tell you what, boy. I, that's why I told my wife to drink when she's pregnant, because that's our child, and I we do what we want here. I says we gonna drink, and we gonna use gas, and with no. With the hood off, boy, because this hey, is man, America. It's like, it's like circumcision, you know what I mean? Your, your pappy had it, so you need to have it, too. Do you understand me? Hey, it's just man. like that. I, I have mean. fetal alcohol syndrome, and so should my child. So we continue <laughs> the goddamn, we continue the goddamn rich. My baby hey, looked like a goddamn hammerhead shark. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey, man. The fetal, <laughs> the fetal alcohol syndrome is a trademark of yeah. our family How genetics. Else? How else? <laughs> Are we going to continue, uh, 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 you know, bro <laughs> breeding conservative generations, okay, without them getting poisoned? <laughs> That's right. Actually, early polls have uh, tightening between Trump and DeSantis. But one thing I did want to help Trump out with is that his nicknames for Ron have been incredibly weak. So far. So far. Ron the Sanctimonious was just a disaster. Too, too much. Too much. Too mouthy. Well, we, we put together a lot of suggestions. Actually, we have a lot of suggestions for Trump. I like Ron DeStinky. That's the one you use. I'll rattle off a few. Ron D's Nuts. No. <laughs> Ron Dysfunctional. Good. Deep State DeSantis. I like that. That's a good one. That's powerful. Alliteration right? is always good. Deep state DeSantis. What about? He's working with the deep state. You got to say it in the Trump voice. Yeah. That one actually could actually, I feel like that one could hit him hard. Deep state yeah. DeSantis. Uh, wrong depression. So, uh, wrong DeSantis is one that I've also come up with as well. I see this on the list. Uh, Wait, what? You just said his name. Wrong. Wrong. Oh, wrong. Wrong DeSantis. Wrong. 
He's always wrong. Another one is wrong. Rhonda. So I, I, um, wrong. Another thing that Trump, another avenue that Trump can hit Ron DeSantis on, and this goes to the whole like the boots saga. Remember when he was wearing the boots, and then Billy they like, boots, yeah. they, and then they memed it into like oh. wearing like these sexy ass thigh highs, you know? Silly Dude, boots, this, Ron. This Silly boots, have, Ron. I, looking at this picture, yeah. I haven't seen in a minute. This is a fashion holocaust. Yeah, you could you could like hit the angle of like, Rhonda. He wants to be a woman. He's gay. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, that would definitely appeal to his audience. Like, he's so feminine. Rhonda, I call him. Little Rhonda. How about, um, uh, Ron, let's see. Wrong DeSantis is when you said Rhonda Deceiver. <laughs> Ron Desqu- Ron Desquintus? Because he squints? That's yeah. a little over. Ron Desquintus? I don't know. That doesn't hit. Like, I mean, he does yeah, squint a lot. Have you ever seen his eyes, folks? He doesn't yeah. have eyes. He doesn't have eyes. He's a reptile. Look what him. color are his Why eyes? Why are his eyes so closed all the time? Ron the shithead. Ron disgusting. Ron the Satan. Ron the Satanist. Yeah. Uh. Ron the Rousey. Decli- Ron. <laughs> Ron the Rousey is like a woman. <laughs> Ron Again. declining poll numbers. No. Ron demonic. Long. Ron Disgusting. Ooh, there's a good one in here that I hadn't thought about. Ron the Rhino. Yeah, yeah that's a good I one. like that. He's that a rhino, powerful. folks. Yeah. He's... Ron the Single Ladies. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Ron the Size Queen. Wow. Ron the Portum. I think that's a that probably that's make a him plus. sound good. Yeah, yeah, he's not trying to yeah. he's not trying to glaze him. Ron Descended Stomach because he's fat. <laughs> Some of these are so bad. Ron Deteriorate. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ron Theft Auto de Sandrius? <laughs> the wow. San Andreas, dude. Yeah, yeah. Ron de No Riz. Ron de No Riz. No. Actually, of all yeah, these no ones, Riz, folks. if I'm being serious for a moment here. Please, I was never not serious. This is a very serious issue. <laughs> Wait. If Trump, if Trump wants to defeat Ron in the Republican primaries. Deep State Ron is the best one. Deep State Ron that is good. That one will destroy him. I think Little Rhonda, he's so little, he's like a woman. <laughs> that one's good. Little Rhonda. I don't know. Like, I know that his voters don't care, but that one alienates some people. Deep State DeSantis is like, speaks yeah, straight but, like, to the you conspiratorial. Have to, but, but, I know, but like, you have Lizard to like... Brain. You have to find a reason why he's like pro deep state. You know what I mean? And there isn't much because he does like he follows the Trump method really closely. So like mm. he's also portrayed himself as like anti deep state. Yeah, if you just lie, Trump will just make shit up. Yeah. Um I mean this is a careful one. This this is a delicate matter. Uh and <laughs> Well, if we've gone over these, you know sure as hell Trump's gone all over, all over these. Places. No, I think he's like, he thinks he's so good. Like, he doesn't need to. But he does. So? Like, you're not. This is homework. important. This is going to yeah. be really important for Trump, him. like, with the NFT shit, like, he is not as popping as he once was. Oh, Ron so, like, DeSnorris. Oh. Ah. I think the Ron snooze. the Stinky is good. Snooze, you can also, like, do some, like, ethnic uh, hatred there. You can be like, he's Italian, folks. He's <laughs> stinky. He's not showering. You know how Italians are or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I lived in New York. I know how Italians are. Believe me, folks. Believe me, folks. Like, that kind of thing, you know? Because <laughs> a lot of his, a, a lot of his no, audience, no, no. like, a, a, a lot of his fans, like, they... One, even if he shits on them directly, they love that. They're like, yeah, we are. We are stinky. You're right. You know? <laughs> and also, uh, if you're if you're in the South and you're, like, not Italian, you know what I mean? If you're, like, uh, Anglo-Saxon, uh, then you, you could maybe get into that, like, old uh, anti, anti-Catholic sentiment. Mm. Ron you know? Dementia? Old school. Although Trump's way older, so that's not going to really work. Yeah. Well, there it is, Trump. If you are watching, and I... I know probably at least one of your dumbass sons is. Uh, maybe they could pass a couple of those suggestions on to you for well, our enjoyment. Junior's a f- longtime fan of this show. He, yeah, he wished yeah. us well on our first. That's episode. true. He, yep. He's been a he's been a first day. He's a I real leftover. Sure is. You have that. He's down? not a bandwagon fan. He's been Shout on board. Out to the Good luck le- with all of that leftovers. Leftovers. <laughs> Talk to you soon. I wish you well. All right. Well, that's about all we've got. We covered everything, eh? That's it. God damn. Look at that.
We did it. Another banger episode in the book. I mean, there's the Paul Pelosi attack video, but it's just disturbing. I didn't feel like watching it. Oh, I've already... Yeah, you probably covered that a I, lot. I, I've covered it uh, extensively yeah. and made a lot of jokes. It's absolutely insane how... Yeah, you how know what? gay but, sex is punished in this country still. <laughs> well, this, there's a video of this absolutely man breaking disgusting. into the house with a hammer. Yeah. Striking him with a hammer when the police show up, and people go, "Why wasn't he wearing pants?" They were obviously well, having. Well, I mean, well, I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's called Daddy Dom role play, and <laughs> yes. they're deep and, in role and play, and they're doing it. <laughs> no, okay. the most offensive part about it is that, like, listen, why the fuck are do you think that if Paul Pelosi is a gay man, okay, you think he's gonna fuck David the Pappy? Or get True. fucked by David DePappy. He's True. in San Francisco. There's like blood boys and shit. He could get shit. premium cock. Right. Yeah, he could get the best kind of bussy on the market. He's yeah, gonna that, fuck David, dude. That's the wow. single best um, hadn't thought explanation of that. I've heard. It's insane. Absolutely. It's insane. Absolutely. You can't simultaneously say these guys have like untapped, uh, you know, baby reserves that they get adrenochrome from, so and then true. simultaneously be like, but the only. The only, uh, uh, you know, uh, gay prostitute he could get was David the Pappy. Maybe David's uh, hung like a fucking hog, like a horse. Bro, it doesn't matter. Where's your daddy? Maybe he's a side. Maybe, does, um, does hold on. San Francisco, matter. he's got plenty of them. Maybe, maybe, uh, it's he's San a, Francisco. What's you his can... name? The Pappy? No, the, uh, Paul Pelosi. Maybe he's a size queen. It doesn't matter. He could find, uh, uh, you think so? He could find someone with a way bigger cock. You think so? Yeah. And with, with uh, you know, who's way sexier than some fucking basement dwelling groiper like David DePeepe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there it is, folks. Uh, it's all happening. This is America. <laughs> We're covering it all live here from our gajillion dollar bunker. Did you, are you watching Last of Us? No. What Not yet. Like I watched that? the first episode. I heard there's gay characters in it. I don't want to fucking yeah. touch that with ten foot pole. The third episode was crazy. I don't want to touch that. They're teaching our children this shit. What the fuck? There's definitely <laughs> dude kissing in the third app. Whoa! Trigger warning. Just to warn y'all, two dudes, it. them lips do touch. It's fucking. And I'll tell shit. you what, man. That's why them zombies come out when those two men kiss. Yeah, that's why. God said, God's oh, punishing us for we gotta for let kissing our homies release which the is why zombies. Stop doing it, you know. I've even though I think that's about right. that's even right. though I think about the luscious lips that's and right. the beard hair touching my beard mm -hmm. when I'm lonely at night by myself. That's think right. About Steven Crowder and the bisexual Mr. Hyde phase he had in college. I'll tell you what, man. People have been wondering who was that Miss <laughs> that Mr. Hyde phase. It I'll was me, man. <laughs> me and Crowder embraced. Wasn't each no other. phase at the time. N won't no phase for me, boy. Tell you what. All right, bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye.